Tonight on KPBS Evening Edition, calls for impeachment. And now the process will begin. Why Democrats say recent actions by President Trump have gone too far. Breaking news, local crews on the fire lines right now. We'll take you there in a live report, plus what's being done to add resources during a dangerous time. Having him naturally and, and allowing my body to do what it's made to do is the best thing ever. A healthy, safe birth for mother and child will tell you about local help for families. It really took everybody everywhere. This was their lifeline. And the GI Film Festival begins in San Diego. We'll take you to the opening night event. KPBS Evening Edition starts now. Good evening, it's Tuesday, September 24th. Thanks for joining us, I'm Priya Shreether. It's something that's rarely happened in U.S. history, the impeachment of a president. But now Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi says the time has come again. The actions of the Trump presidency revealed the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. The actions taken to date by the president have seriously violated the Constitution, especially when the president says, Article 2 says I can do whatever I want. That issue is a phone call President Trump had this summer with the president of Ukraine. President Trump admits he asked the Ukrainian president to investigate members of Joe Biden's family and that he froze U.S. financial aid to Ukraine just days earlier. Today, Congressman John Lewis added his name to the growing number of Democrats eager to begin impeachment hearings. The future of our democracy is at stake. There come a time when you have to be moved by the spirit of history to take action to protect and preserve the integrity of our nation. I believe, I truly believe, the time to begin impeachment proceedings against this president has come. A whistleblower was the first to raise concerns about the president's phone call. President Trump says he will release a transcript of the call tomorrow. As for the president's reaction to the talk of impeachment, he took to Twitter to call it part of a witch hunt. The president also says the move takes attention away from his speech at the United Nations. Karen Kaifa has more on his message to world leaders. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. President Trump taking his America First mantra to the United Nations General Assembly for the third speech of his presidency, rebuking globalism and embracing nationalism. The truth is plain to see. If you want freedom, take pride in your country. If you want democracy, hold on to your sovereignty. As expected, the president had sharp words for Iran, but first he turned to China, criticizing abusive trade practices which have gone unchecked for too long in the midst of tense negotiations between the world's two largest economies. As I have made very clear, I will not accept a bad deal for the American people. President Trump then turned to Iran, calling on other countries to bat back Iran's influence, especially in the wake of an attack on Saudi oil facilities that the U.S. and now the U.K., France and Germany have blamed on Tehran. As long as Iran's menacing behavior continues, sanctions will not be lifted. They will be tightened. Trump's speech aired live on Iranian state television. The rest of his day included meetings with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is facing political turmoil after the UK Supreme Court on Tuesday ruled his suspension of Parliament unlawful. In Washington, Karen Kaifa, KPBS News. Republicans in the Senate are pushing to give President Trump the $5 billion he's requested to build about 200 miles of fencing along the U.S.-Mexico border. The wall money is contained in a larger $71 billion draft funding bill for the Department of Homeland Security. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is pushing back on the fence funding. A vote is expected tomorrow. President Trump already received $1.4 billion earlier, earlier this year through the regular budget process. 
process. And the Trump administration is taking aim at the poor air quality in California. It's threatening to take away federal highway funds unless it better addresses the problem. The EPA describes the air quality as the worst in the nation. Just last week, though, the Trump administration revoked California's authority to set its own emission standards. And we have breaking news involving a wildfire, and it comes on a day officials were concerned about due to warm, windy conditions. This is video from Cal Fire in Dehesa showing an airdrop. Fire crews say 150 acres have burned near Dehesa Road and Sloan Canyon Road. Earlier today, the county fire authority talked about its long-term strategic plan. KPBS reporter Matt Hoffman is live in Dehesa with more on that. Matt? Yeah, Priya, we're out here right now. We're just east of El Cajon where the fire started early this afternoon. If you take a look here behind me, just over that hill or that mountain over there is where we saw a lot of smoke earlier this afternoon. And we're being told right now that more than 150 acres has burned. We've seen multiple helicopters and airplanes going in there making some drops. This area of the unincorporated county falls under Cal Fire and the County Fire Authority. And today the county released its strategic plan to deal with fires just like this one. We've outlined a plan, you know, to continue to increase um, staffing, not only on fire engines, but uh, we've grown from five paramedic engines to 17 paramedic engines. County Fire Chief Tony Meacham says the county is also focusing on outreach to communities in high-risk fire areas. We've got to start looking at it from a new lens, and that's not just responding to fires, but we, we have to start preparing the communities before that fire occurs. That includes doing more inspections to make sure homes have a defensible space. People have a responsibility to kind of protect their own property and stay engaged. Meacham says this summer was unusually slow for wildfires, but that could change at any moment. We're at that critical phase, though, as we get into the fall months. We're really dependent on the Santa Ana winds. If we get strong Santa Ana winds, we're going to have a heightened fire threat. Dry and strong Santa Anita winds are infamous for contributing to large fires in San Diego County. When the Santa Ana winds are going to blow, people need to start taking measures at home. Yeah, and as you can just see, a helicopter just flew right over there, just flew right over us. There's some water over there where they've been collecting water to make drops where this fire is happening. Now, we mentioned earlier today was a very high risk for a fire day. It's because of these Santa Anita winds that are blowing out here, excuse me, these Santa Ana winds that are blowing out here. The National Weather Service says they're blowing about 35 miles an hour. They're really dry and strong winds that can really push a fire, really make it spread very, very fast. Now, they say that this is nothing. 35 miles an hour is actually low. They expect these winds to really pick up in October and even November as well. But crews are still out here. We see some staging out here for this fire, but the County Fire Authority really taking a hard approach to this fire. Out here in Dehesa, Matt Hoffman, KPBS News. Seems like an ongoing situation. Hopefully those fire crews can contain that fire. Thanks, Matt. And all across the state, fire and power companies are on alert due to windy, warm weather. So much so, tens of thousands are being left without power as a safety precaution. The blackouts are taking place in fire-prone areas of Northern California, like Grass Valley and near Paradise, where a wildfire blamed on downed power lines killed 86 people last year. Power companies in Southern California are also on alert, saying they'll cut power if they need to. You may have seen a higher electricity bill this summer. SDG&E says it has a plan to lower rates. But as KPBS science and technology reporter Shalita Chutlani tells us, there's a catch. SDG&E has been getting customer complaints over high summertime bills for a while. That's why it submitted a proposal to the California Public Utility Commission to lower customer summertime bills by $7 a month. But Mindy Spat at the consumer advocacy group, the Utility Reform Network, says the proposal is not as sweet as customers might think. To be clear, this is not a reduction in customers' bills. It's more of an evening out because the money that you don't pay in the summer months, you're going to pay in the winter months. Your, your bill is not going to spike as high in the summer, but it's not going to go as low in winter. Spat says the only way to really change customers' bills is for the utility to overall lower its high electricity rates. Still, Wes Jones of sdg &E says the proposal will meet customers' summertime concerns. So we think uh, getting rid of that seasonal change is a way to make more consistent bills throughout the entire year. 
Um, that gives people the ability to budget their household energy expenses. And Jones says he thinks it's likely the California Public Utilities Commission will give its stamp of approval. If that happens, the proposal will go into effect in the summer of 2020. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News. Well, it's a big night in Balboa Park. We'll take you there live in a moment for opening night of the 2019 GI Film Festival. But first, here's a preview of what you can expect this year. Head in the dust, feet in the fire. Labor on that midnight wire. Listening for that angel choir. You got nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. Oh. Three, 29. I don't know that we're trying to save anyone. We're just trying to help some people. We're going to bring you home no matter what. That's what a donut dollar is. A gal from home who came and cared. You can find a way to help other veterans. That's the single greatest healing you can have. The 2019 GI Film Festival San Diego. So to keep on marching on. Powerful stuff. While well, KPBS military reporter Steve Walsh is live at Balboa Park, where guests are arriving for a special opening night screening. Steve? Well, that's right, Priya. This is the opening night of the GI Film Festival. We're out here at the Museum of Photographic Arts. The film for the opening night is Take Home Huey. It's the story of turning a Vietnam-era Huey into an art project. And we have with me the, uh, the project creator here, Steve Maloney, and then two of the veterans who are featured in this film, Carl Renz and uh, Jerry McNelly. But first, Steve, tell me about this film. Where did you get the idea of taking a Vietnam-era helicopter and turning it into an art project? Well, I'd done another helicopter piece before this, but it, was a, it wasn't serious. This is a serious piece. I thought it was an iconic symbol of the Vietnam War, and I was lucky enough to uh, work with an agency, a nonprofit that found a boneyard one for me to transform. How hard is it to find a Vietnam era, era Huey at this point? It's not easy. Okay, there you go. So we have a couple of the vets here that were in this film. Um, so, uh, Carl, when you see a Huey, when you see it, you, like on your shirt, what do, you, what do you think of? What images does it conjure up in your mind? Oh, right back to Vietnam. I went to Vietnam when I was 17, and so you ever hear Hugh, you hear it for the rest of your life, and so it's, it's just part of my DNA, you know, and so it, it brings back good memories, bad memories, but thanks to Steve, I'm a lot healthier now because of this project. And Jerry, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, you've uh, uh, lectured people, talked about P PTSD, and this project is kind of part of that therapy, isn't it? Absolutely. Steve had the insight to see the need for that, and he was just fantastic in the way that he created this art, brought it to the public, which brought the veteran community to the project and helped them understand that they do have some issues and they are things that they need to deal with. And uh, it's just a kind heart and the insight of people like Steve that bring this to the public's eye. All right, thanks a lot, Jerry. This is opening night of the GI Film Festival out here at Balboa Park. Uh, films will be running through Sunday, both here and at the uh, Ultra Star Cinemas at Hazard Center. Um, films by veterans, for veterans, a whole r range of topics. Back to you, Priya. Yeah, I think a lot of us are really looking forward to checking out some of those films. Thank you so much, Steve. San Diego County will spend more money on mental health care. Supervisors voted unanimously today to boost the Psychiatric Emergency Response Team, also known as PERT. $600,000 will go toward retaining and increasing staff. PERT teams include a mental health clinician and law enforcement officer who work together to de-escalate mental health emergencies. Today, Massachusetts became the latest state to declare a public health emergency over vaping. It comes as Congress hears more about vaping-related illnesses. Nadia Romero has more from Capitol Hill. I'm joining the movement of moms 
who was parents against vaping e-cigarettes and saying enough is enough. Our kids should not be the guinea pigs. Ruby Johnson speaking today in front of a House subcommittee on the dangers of vaping. The CDC warns just don't do it. Recent deaths sparking strong words from lawmakers too. When a product is released onto the market without safety testing or clinical trials, this is what we fear. The long-term health effects remain unknown, but that didn't stop lawmakers from sending a scathing letter to the FDA about Juul, a major brand of e-cigarettes, warning the FDA that the company appears to be violating its regulations by claiming its product is safer than cigarettes. Juul is expected to respond next week. But earlier this month, the president of American Vaping Association defending the use of flavored products and pushing back on an all-out ban on vaping. There is absolutely some inappropriate marketing in this industry. And when you can uh, actually have regulations, not prohibition, you can control flavor names. You can control packaging. But the fact is, that gets ignored all too often in this debate, fruit flavors are the most popular flavor among adults and most importantly, the most used flavor among adults who have quit smoking with vaping. But that explanation doesn't do enough for Ruby Johnson, a parent who's seen the harmful effects of e-cigarettes. If this was romaine lettuce, the shelves would be empty. We desperately need our legislators to help us by banning the flavors that have drawn in youth like my daughter, including mint and menthol. In Washington, Nadia Romero, KPBS News. Hundreds of women die each year from childbirth, and many of the deaths are preventable. KPBS health reporter Taryn Mento tells us how local groups are helping the moms and babies that face the greatest risk of death. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Close enough, right? Exactly. We often ask pregnant women the same questions. When do you do? Is it a boy or a girl? Have you picked names? The one you likely don't ask is, are you worried you'll die? But that's all Sheraven Johnson could think about since a pink line told her she was with child. There was a series of dreams. It wasn't just one. It was like, it was, it was haunting, actually. So it was, I wouldn't say dreams, more like nightmares. Nightmares that she or her child would die. Sitting around the kitchen table at her Encanto home, it's easy to discuss this on camera. Her two-month-old son sat safely in the arms of his mom and her wife, Nasira Johnson. But while pregnant, her fear consumed her, especially when she saw the data. Black women like her are three times more likely to die from childbirth than white women. And their kids are twice as likely. It was just like, okay, so... I'm, I'm going into, I'm about to play Russian roulette with birth right now. Johnson was so worried about becoming a statistic, she wrote a letter to her unborn child, just in case. I did that in my phone. I did, in my notes. Not even her wife knew about it. I remember just saying how much I loved him um, and that, you know, if anything did happen, I tried my hardest to hold on. But she held on and delivered Asir Johnson in July. Johnson says she got there thanks to the help of her doula, Venice Cotton. They trust us to know what the doctors are saying. A doula is an informed and experienced aide who advises a woman before, during, and after childbirth, sort of like an educated best friend. To know what's going on and what type of complications could arise and they trust us to be able to explain to them what's going on and let them make the right decision. Doulas are pricey and not typically covered by insurance. Limited research available shows they can reduce the risk of complications and low birth weights. And the local nonprofit for the village wants more women to have them, especially black women. The group is working with Project Concern International to train doulas and provide them for free. And the mom being in this position helps the baby swing and rotate to anterior. But doulas aren't without controversy. They aren't licensed, so training varies. And Cotton says medical staff may feel doulas get in their way. We come in with not medical training, but experience and knowledge and a more natural way to do what they do with medicine. Johnson says cotton support was what she and her wife needed. Having a partner there is nice, you know, a spouse or family member, but someone to guide that family member and to tell me what to do and to tell her how to help me, it was, it was comforting. That comfort wasn't just during labor. 
Johnson had prenatal checkups, but Cotton was keeping up with her while she was at home. I would have to send confirming pictures that I was laying in bed with my big jug of water. And the program offers the same support after birth. The other doulas, like Cotton, visit moms at home before their first postpartum checkup. The additional attention already helped two black moms get to the hospital for life-threatening issues that they didn't even know they had. Oh, I don't think birth should be a game of Russian roulette. Cotton's continued support also helped Johnson achieve a positive birth experience with son Asir. For her first child, Michaela, Johnson was induced and reluctantly agreed to an epidural. She wanted a drug-free delivery at a birthing center for her son, but needed help getting through the final hours of painful contractions. Nas was getting frustrated. And so Nas was just like, you know what? I'm going to go sit over here. So, and Sharaven, she was being more than stubborn. Okay, she they can laugh now, but the situation was tense as Johnson begged to go to a hospital. Cotton says Johnson didn't show signs of complications, so she pushed her on. And Johnson is grateful. Having him naturally and, and allowing my body to do what it's made to do is the best thing ever. Definitely. I would do it again. I would. I'd, I would. I'd risk it all again. She now plans to support other moms-to-be. Johnson completed doula training at For the Village earlier this month. Taryn Mento, KPBS News. I'm William Brangham. Tonight on the News Hour, questions of impeachment. President Trump's actions with Ukraine prompt new calls for action. Coming up at 7, right after Evening Edition on KPBS. Earlier, we told you about how the weather is bringing a risk for wildfires. Some areas will also see a chance of rain this week. Mark Mancuso has tonight's forecast. Here's a look at our weather headlines. Dry conditions, our fire danger peaks tonight, and the winds will start to die down. A few showers and maybe a thunderstorm or two sneaking into the area Wednesday night into Thursday. And then for the weekend, here comes a cooling trend. Well, as we take a look at our fire danger that continues into tonight on the wane by the morning hours, a strong offshore gusts will wind down. And of course, it's dry out there and seasonably warm. Looking at temperatures tonight, our low down to 67 degrees, mainly clear skies with that offshore flow. Uh, Borrego Springs, 69. And there you see Mount Laguna down into the 50s, Campos into the 50s, and Oceanside right around 60 degrees for a low. Now we have an upper low spinning over the southwest here. It's going to wobble a little bit more towards Southern California, and that will bring a little moisture into the area. So a couple of showers, thunderstorms sneaking into the high desert, the mountain areas, maybe even in some of the coastal communities. Future cast, uh, as we take you into Wednesday, shows you the, the green areas representing possible showers or thunderstorms, and that continues uh, right into Thursday here. So a very slow moving system. As we take a look at our temperatures for tomorrow, lots of sunshine, up to 78 in Oceanside, and you can see Borrego Springs, 92, Campos at 81. Looking ahead here, coastal communities, uh, well, there could be a spotty shower, thunder shower Wednesday night. And then over the weekend, a stray shower of that cooler air coming into the area. Inland, uh, uh, they could see partly sunny skies. Could there be a stray shower, thunder shower perhaps, and then cooling for the weekend. Taking you into the mountains, showers, thunderstorms around into Thursday, then turning cooler, breezy for your weekend. And even here in the desert, so, uh, there could be a shower, thunderstorm around into Thursday. Temperatures trending down over the weekend. For KBBS News, I'm Acu Weather Meteorologist Mark Mancuso. Back to you. Those who live near San Diego International Airport will be happy to hear this. New grant money from the federal government will be used to install sound insulation for homes near the airport. The grants total just over $11 million. Some of that money will also be used on low emission projects at the terminal. Gillespie Field in El Cajon will also receive grant money for a drainage project. In recent days, we've seen the passion from young people hoping world leaders will do more to prevent climate change. But it's also a story evolving in small communities. Sammy Selena tells us how a young girl in Alaska is leading the way in her community. 
Who is on the setup crew for the strike? The fight against climate change for the high schoolers in this conference room hits home. It's an issue that a lot of people care about. For 17-year-old Cassidy Austin. Yeah, I think that's all I have. She's fighting to save her home. All right, guys, I'm from McCarthy, Alaska. My family owns a whitewater rafting company, so I grew up on the river. So being outdoors has been a huge part of my life. I've seen like the rapid melting of our two glaciers, the Kennecott and Root Glacier. We can either swap out or like work together. She said she's seen climate change firsthand. What do we want? And now she's leading the strike for youth in Alaska. Growing up in the Copper River watershed in a rural Alaska community, I've seen the detrimental impacts of climate change both upriver and downriver. Glaciers and rivers play a role in defining Alaska, but so do industries like oil and gas. They need to look at our current portfolio. I mean, we have um, tens of billions of barrels of oil remaining in Alaska. We're energy companies and we provide a product that the globe demands. And the global demand for oil and natural gas is not going away. I think that having sustainable economy is far more important than making quick and easy money. Cassidy believes that as much as she and others are fighting for clean energy, environmental change, and protection. In my town, our glaciers are receding more rapidly than ever before. They are also fighting for the future of their home. For Channel 2 News, I'm Sammy Solina. And just last week, KPBS wrapped up a special week of coverage on San Diego's climate crisis. You can find those stories on the KPBS Climate Change Desk at kpbs.org. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening.